Many of my students have said to me that uh, they understand decomposition, they understand perfect squares, all these different methods of factoring. But when they come to a test, sometimes it's hard to make the right decision. So what I've done here is I've created a short test, just seven questions. Some of these uh, expressions have three terms, some of them have four. If you want to stop the, the uh, video right now, you could just do this as a test for yourself if you'd like to practice. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each of these questions in order and just make some, some suggestions on how to approach them. Now the first one is the trinomial that has the large number at the beginning and the end and most students use uh, factoring by decomposition to do this. So the first thing you do is multiply the 12 times 15 which gives us 180. And then we're looking for factors of 180 which in this case add up to negative 29. Now when you first start factoring this 1 times 180, 2 times 90 you notice these totals, 2 plus 90 and so on, are fairly large. We, the, the closer the two numbers are together, the lower this, uh, this sum is going to be. So when I saw that the uh, sum was quite high here, I skipped a few numbers, went on to 6 times 30, which adds up to 36. Uh, still didn't work. 7 doesn't go in, 8 doesn't go in, and finally 9 times 20. 9 and 20 add up to... 29. So those are the uh, numbers that I use to decompose the 29 into a minus 9x and a minus 20x. And then of course we do the common factor, take out a common factor from the first two, take out a common factor from the second two. Notice the sign change here because when you take the negative out that will change. Uh, decomposition is, is good because if you make an error here, you're going to know because these two brackets have to be identical in order to take out that final common factor to give you this. Uh, incidentally, I don't use this method myself. In one of my other videos, I talk about the crisscross method where I list the factors of 12 and 15 and I, and I just look for factors in here that'll, that'll give me this. But that's, that's your decision. If you like decomposition, this is the way to go at that particular question. Now the second one looks like maybe we'll have to use decomposition, but if, you're, if you can spot perfect squares, for example, 16 is a perfect square, 4 times 4, 49 is a perfect square, 7 times 7, 4 times 7 is 28. If that product is half of this number, then we have a perfect square. Uh, just because these are perfect squares on the end here doesn't mean that the question was made up as a perfect square, but this is a fast way to check. 4 times 7, if it's half of this, then those two factors are identical. 4 times 4 is the 16, and there's the 7 times 7 is 49, and the two, the outer and the inner, give us that negative 56. Uh, again, this one looks like it's going to be decomposition again, but always look for a common factor. All three of these are divisible by three. Once you take that three out, this is a fairly easy question to factor. Factors of 24 that add up to 10 are 6 and 4, and that can be done fairly easily. So make sure you look for a common factor first, and also be very aware of the perfect squares. Now when you get four terms, um, it could be, it's, it's grouping, but it could be either two and two or three and one, and I'll show you different examples of this. Now when you first look at this, you can't take a common factor out of the first two, so I just changed the order. It really doesn't matter how you change the order, um, as long as you can get a common factor out of each pair here. See, I took a four out of the first pair took a W out of the second pair. Now, I'm, <laughs> I've still got a bit of a problem here. You see, this is X minus Y, this is Y minus X. So, I have to make a sign change here, turn that into X minus Y, which means I have a sign change out in front. Now, I can take the X minus Y out as a common factor, uh, leaving 4 minus W. 
Here's another question that has four terms, but you see this time x squared plus 6x plus 9 goes together. Now those are written together here. They may be in the wrong order in a question that you have, but once you put them together, all of these questions are made up so that you end up with a difference of squares. So whoever makes up the question has to make sure that those three terms that go together form a perfect square so that you can then go to the sort of a squared minus b squared is a plus b a minus b. And then when I take those uh, interior brackets off, this is what we've got. Here's another question that's got four terms, but you notice there's a, an x squared term, a 10x and a 25. I like those together. I put them last after the w squared because of the minus sign in front of the x squared. I don't want that at the beginning of this question. Now, the next thing I have to do is get rid of that minus sign from, from this part of it. So I factor out the negative, which leads to sign changes here. And as I said before, this always has to be a perfect square. Otherwise, this isn't going to factor. You want to end up with a squared minus b squared which leads to a plus b, a minus b. Now this time because the, the bracketed term comes second, you've got to watch when you remove the brackets. Uh, no changes here, but in this case the minus comes in makes that a plus 5. Uh, the last one is what we call a difference of squares. These are easy to spot because they're exactly what it says, a difference of perfect squares. Uh, 4x squared times 4x squared gives you 16x to the fourth. Plus 9y squared times minus 9y squared gives you negative 81y to the fourth. And of course the middle terms disappear. Uh, that's why it has to be a minus here because you want different signs in your brackets. Now be careful when you're doing one of these because sometimes if these powers are high enough you're going to get another, another difference of squares here. Watch out for that. You don't want to go this far and then lose a mark for, for not spotting the difference of squares there. So I, I hope this helps make you decisions when you come to your factoring, factoring tests.